So got any questions on this stuff? We're doing all right. Okay, why don't you yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, one oh one. It's one oh five minus four. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right, why don't you find the elevation on the ground there for this one? So what's the um, elevation there on the ground up ahead on the fourth side? Yeah, I think that's it. Um, well, the, the everybody getting one forty six fourteen. Doing all right. Okay. So that's it. Okay. Now, okay, now this is done an awful lot when you're doing engineering and, and, and things to find elevations. So there's a standard way to do it. People don't want to be putting little calculations off in the margins and things like that. So there's a standard way to set up the notes, okay? So when you're doing surveying, you keep field notes, and, and there's a standard way to do this. And so this is the standard way, if we're all good with what we got so far here. Um, so what I've got there, this is page 322. I've got uh, uh, instrument taking a back sight on that uh, benchmark. So that's 234.52. So I'm at 234.52, and I call that out of my notes. So what I've got here in the notes is I've got the station, which is like a point that I'm interested in. That's a station. A back sight is a plus sight. HI is height of instrument, FS is a foresight, and that'll have a minus next to it sometimes, and then EL means elevation. So I've got that 234.52, and I take a back sight of 547 on it, and what I get then is 239.99. So what I'm doing there, I'm taking that plus this, and I'm getting that 239.99. That's the HI, height of instrument. And then once I've got that, I'm going to take a bunch of foresight. So I'm going to take that rod and run it on down that little hill there. And I'm just going to take shots on the rod as it goes. So at point A, my HI is at 239.99. And then what have I got there? A 421. So what I'll get out of that will be a 78, 5, 235, 78, right there. So I'm subtracting that off, and that's going to equal. So that's 239.99 plus 
minus 421, and that's 235.78. Okay. Now I'm taking shot after shot from the instrument. So every time I take that shot, I'm starting at 239.99. Okay, because I'm not moving the instrument anywhere. That's the elevation of the instrument. So I'm just subtracting all of these elevations off, and that gets me the, or excuse me, I'm taking all those, subtracting all those rod shots off, and I'm getting those elevations every time, okay? And I'm, so I'm just working my way on down that hill, and every time I'm taking shots, okay? So, oh, on one, there we go. All right, so that's how that would work. And you don't bother to show all the work because you can just do it on a calculator, you know, and you just kind of lay out a nice, clean set of notes like that. Okay, so you all okay with that? That's that's what the notes will look like. So you just add the back side and you subtract the front side from the total, and that gives you your height? Yeah, right, that's it. And once, you know, and... Usually I'll put that 239.99 in memory in my calculator. I'll just keep pulling it back up, you know. Okay. All right. You too can do profile leveling. So why don't you get those elevations there. Fill in the notes at the bottom of 322. I'm sorry now, 322. Two, two. So start off by getting your HI, work your way down the page. What's that? B is for backsight, F is for foresight. Two, one, oh, three. Doing all right. Okay. Um, all right. Now, notice when the rod shots get bigger, what happens to the elevations? Because when you're taking rod shots, as you're going down the road there, you're, those are foresights, you know. So bigger rod shots mean you're going further down, see? So if you, here's a four foot rod shot. If you take a 10 foot rod shot, it's gonna look like that. So that's gonna put you down lower, see? 
So that's something people get a little turned around on sometimes. But a bigger rod shot on a foresight gets you lower elevation. Okay. okay. Good. All right. And and so that's a common type of leveling, something you'll do a lot on construction sites. If you're doing that, you'll set up what are called grade hubs sometimes and shoot those, or you might shoot points on the ground to get topographic information, you know, depending on what you're up to. Okay. Now, there's another way to do this type of, to use this equipment, it's to do something called a level loop. Okay. Now, with a level loop, what we're trying to do is do more precise work and get an elevation that's very, very good, very, you know, right, perfectly on is what we're trying to do with a level loop. This is called a control survey, is what it's called. So, what you do after every foresight, you move the instrument ahead. Okay? So it's, you're using the same equipment, it's just a little bit different kind of thing going on here, okay? And the purpose is a little different. This profile leveling, you might use it to determine the grade on the ground, you know, how it's sloping. You might use it to figure up elevation hubs, el hubs, elevations on hubs or something like that. But level looping you use to do what, what, what I call control work. So what you would do after you shoot your foresight is you'd pick up the instrument and move it ahead and then take a back sight. So what you're doing with a level loop is doing a back sight. Uh, so you take a back sight on the rod, you move the rod ahead and do a foresight. Then you move the instrument ahead and take a back sight. Then you move the uh, rod ahead and do a foresight, et cetera, et cetera, and you can work your way through ground. So here's an example of doing that, a level loop. Okay, and what we're doing, we're starting on benchmark M, and we're going to survey over here to benchmark R. We're going down a valley and back up. Down at the bottom of the valley, we're going to set benchmark P. So that's our purpose here. So what we're doing, this is called a control survey because we're going to set a benchmark, which is something you call control. It's a point you'll use to establish the elevations of other points with. Okay, So I want to be darn sure that thing's right. I just don't want to just take a shot on a rod here. I want to check what I'm doing and, and actually adjust any errors I've made. Okay, So here's how you would proceed with this. So what I've got, I've got benchmark M and benchmark R, I'm assuming they're known points and that they're known to be good and that they've been tied together. So they're on the same datum and they relate well to each other, okay? So what I could do here would be to start at M and work my way down the valley till I put the rod on my benchmark P and then work my way back up and check in at benchmark R. And what I have here is a continuous loop because after every shot, I move either the rod or the instrument. So I've got everything tied together. Okay. So there's the survey there. And the data that I get from that survey is shown on page 332. Okay. So the picture's on 331. The actual data is on 332. Um, well, yeah, of course, there's easier ways to do things. Um, you know, you could GPS it in, but GPS isn't, you know, it's not as accurate vertically as this equipment is when it's used properly. So I, I wouldn't set a benchmark with GPS myself and <laughs> put my name on it anyway. <laughs> At least not if I wanted it accurate to the hundredth of a foot. So, you know, this is still used for precision elevations. I've talked to a few surveyors now, and not too many of them use GPS for real precision elevations. They just don't trust it well enough. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do here then is we're going to set our notes up. Now, notice how the notes snake down the page. That's how I do this. I don't try and compact my work too much because I'll get confused. You know, I kind of think of myself as not really being all that bright. So I've got a bunch of things that I do to compensate for that. 
And one thing I do when I'm doing survey notes is I make it kind of error proof. I just keep working my way down the page as I go. Some surveyors would do those notes like that. And I just get a little nervous about that because sometimes you get a little confused about what to add to what. And I remember uh, I was doing office work and there was a guy out in the field that did them that way. He didn't do any of the math on it though. He just took his shots. And I kind of looked at that and I kind of went, wait a minute here. And I, I, I went and said to him, you know, you know, hang on, what do I add to what? And what do I subtract from what? And he kind of got this deer in the headlights look, you know, <laughs> he got written all this stuff down, but he wasn't quite sure what to do with it. So, so you know, we, I figured it out. You know, we got it worked out. It was okay. But, but all the same, you know, I, I prefer notes like that because I know I'm working my way down the page. So when you do your notes um, this Thursday, why don't you... Uh, Go ahead and, and be sure that you 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 know you you know what you're adding to what and what you're subtracting from what. Work your way down the page in this fashion. Okay. All right. So what we're doing here, we're at 153.18. That's our elevation. We put this back site there in that column. That's written in a different notation. Surveyors often got to fit all their notes on a small space. So instead of going 1.33. Another way to do it is to go 133 like that, a little tighter. You can fit it in a little better. It's also how you write stuff on lath. Sometimes when you do grade stakes, I don't know, you may not know what those terms mean, but we'll get to them. Okay. So we're going to take 153.18. We're going to add the 133, and that's going to equal 154.51. Then we're going to subtract off the 837, and that's going to equal 146.14. We already did that. Okay. And then once we got that, we just uh, repeat the process. So what we're doing here is a level loop. We had the rod on a point that was 153.18. We shot a 133 on it. We moved the, uh, we moved, that got us the HI of the instrument. Then we moved the rod ahead and shot it. And now we'll move the instrument ahead and take another back sight. Okay, so we just keep moving the equipment as we go. So we're going to add 0 plus 22, and that's going to equal 146.36. And we'll subtract off 791, and that'll equal 138.45. Okay. And we just keep looping our way down that valley and back up the other side like that. Okay. So are we okay with that? So we start on a bronze, <laughs> bronze cap, excuse me, at 153.18, and then we work through that survey and we get to benchmark R, and we've got 145.14. Okay? And we just keep track of our elevations as we go. We set benchmark P. And that's a 5 8 inch iron rod that we set down there. What are all those numbers that crossed out? Like 0 .00, 0 .00. We'll, we'll get to those. Those are adjustments is what they are. We'll get to them here in, in just a minute. Okay. So we're still on like 332. Now, notice what elevation we got. We got 145.14, but see, we, we came back to a benchmark. We're, we're checking in on benchmark R, and what's the elevation of benchmark R as recorded somewhere? If you look back here, and what's it, what is it? It's 145.11, right? Okay. So what we did ain't right. Okay, but nothing you measure out in the field is right, so don't worry about it. Okay, that's an idea you want to kind of get used to. Is there ain't nothing that's right? Okay. See, we came in at one forty-five fourteen, but that elevation that someone was confident enough out of to make into a benchmark is one forty-five eleven. We got some error in our survey. And like we were talking about last week, error isn't necessarily a horrible thing. It's part of surveying. Anytime you get out there in the heat or the rain or whatever and you set up equipment and you run it and you got people on it there's going to be error it's just how it is okay but we got to deal with that error 
Now, if I'm just out there doing profile leveling, shooting shots on the dirt, I don't really care about a little bit of air. It doesn't bother me too much. But when I'm setting a benchmark, I care. I want to know how much air I got. I want to fix it as best I can. You know, it's a little different story here when I'm setting a benchmark, okay? So let's kind of go through the process of seeing what we can do to, to rectifying this error, okay? All right. Step number one is I'm going to make sure I didn't bust any math here. I didn't make a mathematical error, so I'm going to add up all the back sites, and I'm going to add up all the force sites. Okay, I'm going to do a page check then. I'm going to take what I started with, 153.18. I'm going to take, I'm going to add up the sum of the back sites. That's 40.24. I'm going to take away the sum of the force sites. It's 48.28. I'm going to come up with 145.14. That's okay. So I didn't make an arithmetic error. I'm, I'm good. I can, I can hit my calculator buttons pretty well, apparently. Okay, so I'm good. Now, what I want to do next is figure out how much error I got. Okay? That's referred to as the error of closure. And this is commonly done when you do what I call a control survey, which is what we're doing. We're setting a benchmark. We want to know how high that thing is. That's going to be control for us for other surveys, a reference point. So I want to know what my error is. I came in at 145.14, but I know that bench is at 145.11. That's three hundredths of error. I came in three hundredths too high. Okay. Now, what I want to know is, is that acceptable? Okay. And... Finding out if that's acceptable error can be done a lot of different ways. One way is like, okay, that's three hundredths. Can I live with that? <laughs> okay, that's the most basic way to see if you got acceptable error. All right, and you know, if I'm setting a rock, if I'm just doing a gravel road, yeah, that's fine. I can live with that, fine. But if I'm doing a, a sewer that's running ten miles on really flat ground, maybe not. Maybe I better get a little tighter than that. But you know, I don't know. It just depends what you're up to. But there's also mathematical ways to do it. So the official, one official way to do it, and there's all different ways to do this. This is for construction, which is probably the least uh, accurate type of surveying that we do. Um, it's 0 0.02 times the square root of n. n is the number of setups. Okay. So what we got, 0.02 is a constant that you use. Um, I could spell setups. I might be doing a little better here. Um, we've set up the instrument one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. So I go 0.02 times the square root of seven, and I get 0.05. So that's the acceptable error for construction work. Now, if I take 0.02 on my calculator and multiply it by the square root of 7, what do I get? If I knew where the square root key was, I could tell you. Okay. That looks about right. Times 0.02. <laughs> that was a problem. So let's try it again. Square root of 7 times 0.02. Actually, I got 0.05. So if I take 0 0.02 times the square root of 7, what I get is 0 0.052915, okay? Now, why did I call that 0 0.05? I'm rounding. Yeah, why am I rounding to the hundredth? Why did I pick the hundredth around to? That's what I shot it to, right? So not rocket science there, okay? I'm just rounding to what I shot to. And so that's bigger than the 300th error I've got, so that's okay, all right? Now, the next thing I'm going to do is correct, okay? Now, the correction, and you might want to write this down. I don't know if I've got this for you or not, so why don't you write it down for now, is the negative, because I came in high, I want to adjust down, is the negative of the error of closure over the number of setups, which is n. Okay? 
So lacking any better information, what I'm going to assume is that error just accumulated slowly. And if that's the case, if that error accumulated over seven shots, on each shot I had 0.03 over seven of error. Okay. And I'm going to put a negative in there because I came in high. I want to adjust back down low. That's what I want to do. Okay. So this is a real common theme on control surveys. You, you figure out how much air you got. That's called your air of closure. You determine if it's acceptable or not. And then you do a correction, a mathematical correction to make your data perfect. Your field data is pretty much never perfect. Okay. But uh, your, what you do with it mathematically makes it perfect. If you're within acceptable errors to begin with, okay. you have, then you kind of have the right to do that. Okay. Yeah, a friend of mine went out on a Friday afternoon and did a real long survey to shoot in some wellheads. And uh, he had a little too much air when he came back Friday at 5.15 or something. He wasn't a very happy camper about that. He had to, he, he did what all surveyors, all good surveyors do. He blamed the instrument. <laughs> and he went home for the weekend and figured he'd fix it on Monday or something. I don't know. We had a, something from this .02 is a standard number for construction. Okay. All right. So let's fix this data now, okay? So let's see what we can do with this. So what we've got are those elevations that we shot in. Our correction is negative of 0.0043, okay? So what we're going to do then is we're going to take that 0 0.0043 negative and use it to correct each shot, but we're going to do it cumulatively. The first shot doesn't get any adjustment at all because that's the benchmark. The next shot, we use negative 0.0043 times 1, but we're grounding to the hundredth, so that rounds out to 0. Okay. Shot after that, we're going to use negative 0.0043 times 2. Okay, that's 0 0.086. That rounds out to 100. So we're going to take our 138.45 minus 0 0.01. The next one will take negative 0 0.0043 times 3 hundredths. And that'll get us 0 0.0129. That rounds out as a hundredth. You get the idea here? So you just keep multiplying your correction factor by the number by which shot you're on essentially and that's your total correction for that shot. The last one would be negative 0 0.0043 times 7 and that should pretty much fix your error perfectly. You might have a little rounding error in there but that comes out to be negative 0.03 and that perfectly fixes my problem. I've got from the 145.14 down to 145.11. All right, so that's how you adjust a survey. You're, you're making it mathematically perfect because your field data is never perfect. Are we doing all right with that? All right, now the last page there, if we're doing all right with that, has a um, set of notes that are compressed. A lot of people in the industry do them this way. Um, I don't because I, I just don't want to make errors, but they do it this way where they just use one line for all their data. If you do it this way, you got to drop your foresight column one row down, okay? So remember that. That's, the, uh, that's how it's done in industry. You take that foresight column and drop it down one. So the idea here is all the shots on this row relate to that elevation. All the shots on this row relate to that elevation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. 
But as I said, I don't do it that way. I snake down the page because it makes it easier for me to do the numbers when I get to that. All right. So that's kind of the deal with that. That's how that's done. So let's get you uh, a few things to do here. If we're okay with that. Um, let's see. Let's go here first. No, that's not good. Here. I think we'll just pause that for now. At least try to.